Wah. Wah. Okay. Hey guys, All right. what's up? Welcome to the How Diaries podcast, the best podcast <clears throat> in Bacolod City. A very well known fact and backed up by statistics. It's facts, guys. Yeah. My name is Tris, and this is my partner in crime, the sneaky raccoon, the beautiful <laughs> Sophia. And we aim to entertain you guys with high quality audio content, mainly about the Bacolod lifestyle to keep you cultured and in the know. So I suggest you tune in. Before we start, we would like to ask you to leave a like, follow, subscribe, and maybe share the podcast if you think it's good. You can watch it with video on YouTube, turn on the post notification bell to get updates. Also on Facebook and for audio only, you can listen to it on Spotify, Buzzsprout, and Reason.fm. All the links and handles will be in the description below. I I, I got a little choked up there. <laughs> yes, you did. What happened, bro? No, because I'm drinking coffee and like, <laughs> it's sticky. Uh, it's sticky. Okay. I know what else is sticky. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like I like starting the podcast like this because we were so you know we were talking about something else. <laughs> yeah. It's just so funny to randomly start it like this. We're gonna do this more often because like you know how it yeah. is. We have fun here, right? So we do have yeah, fun yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi. No, what was that again? The other thing you said. No thanks. Hindi salamat. <laughs> nah, bro. Nah, bro. He had one job. I really couldn't. I can't. I won't accept that. <laughs> we won't accept that. Because we were talking, guys. I actually make production notes for the podcast before we start. And, like, I opened my phone. And on Google Docs, there's a pop-up that said, um, do you want to download the app? It's in Tagalog. So, it says, like, uh, you edit yung docs, I think. I'm not good at speaking Tagalog, guys. But, like, you <laughs> edit yung docs. And, like, you had you had a choice between salamat na lang and download ang app <laughs> so it's like it just it's why not salamat so na lang aggressive. it's not so passive aggressive it doesn't even <laughs> sound like it's supposed to be on the app i know man <laughs> like, <laughs> me and sophia were, were thinking like what could be another alternative for salamat na lang no, th- no, no thanks. thanks it should be no thanks in english right so <laughs> so it's a lot you said hindi salamat. Yeah, I said hindi Boy, salamat. That's not, <laughs> a very that's big not testament to me not knowing how to speak Tagalog. <laughs> <laughs> we we couldn't even think of anything else. So yeah, yeah I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of it's kind of hard. Yeah, I mean, I I can't blame the guy anymore. <laughs> and it, yeah, me too, man. me too, man. But if it's salamat na lang, who the fuck hurt you, bro? <laughs> who the hell it hurt just you, man? So exactly, we're here for you, bro. Don't don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Chat me up, Google Docs guy. Maybe watch the podcast. We mentioned you here. <laughs> okay. Only. So, I wanted to start this off with, like, talking about the TikTok we have now. Because we, guys, we actually made a TikTok. All of the clips of the podcast will be uploaded there. If you want a shorter version of what we're doing here now, this would be an hour or, like, from the last podcast, two hours. We're going to make little clips for you guys to make it a little easier to <laughs> to see our point <laughs> to yeah there's like a lot of points it's easier than it took a please follow guys yeah and we are gonna do more trends and like you know lip syncs and other stuff but like seriously we're just gonna help you find good points from our podcast that's that yeah. it is what it is yeah, yeah. Yeah. And another and you, interest... you you get to like you get to know us more in the in the TikTok. So we're gonna be posting other stuff too. Yeah, and I guess like with TikTok, Sophie's gonna be better than me, and I'm just gonna be that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna be there for the ride, bro. <laughs> well, you'll learn. No, you you're gonna get there. I know. I mean, if if yeah. we're gonna do dancing, that's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> An 80, 80, 80 what's kilogram how do you say that like, it, it's usually pounds in the u.s right like an 80 pound guy i was gonna i was about to say an 80 kilogram guy fucking doing a dance. it just 80, doesn't sound right i know, just the 80 kilo, <laughs> 80 kilo? <I> don't know. <laughs> okay I'm, I'm being stupid okay. but the buzz on tiktok right now mm. is i mean no not sorry so you cut off a little bit 
no, I mean, you said you were stupid. And I was like, mm-hmm, no, I'm not trying to agree to that. I'm, you're smart, dude. I'm just trying to, <laughs> I'm just trying to, end, trying to end the conversation. Okay. Thank you, Sophie, for saying that I'm smart. You are too. I bet. Okay. I mean, smarter than me, probably. <clears throat> Let's not get into a competition here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, the TikTok. You were, t- you were talking about something. Oh yeah. Um the buzz on TikTok right now, it's really sad, guys. Um Ukraine and Russia are actually re- actually starting a war right now. I mean, Russia started it and Ukraine's really in deep 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 shit right now, but like they're fighting back actually based on what I see. And again, it comes back to yeah. what I said about how TikTok could give you real insight on what on world events rather than just lip syncs and tiktok dances and stuff like that sometimes me and sophie we just send each other videos and like that that are really important right now i've i've i got yeah. aware honestly of the of the war because of tiktok like it's they they did it first not gonna lie i haven't seen news articles i haven't me seen too. the tv and like yeah tiktok and ukraine versus russia it's really sad anything to say so well, I'm not sure, but I saw a TikTok earlier about how the president of, I think, president of Ukraine, um, he he he's really gonna put himself like in the war. Like mo- most presidents are usually just somewhere far away in their in their office while their men do the fighting. While he's literally joining them because because Ukraine doesn't really have a lot of men not gonna lie they don't have a lot of troops mm-hmm. unlike Russia they're they're literally even in games they're literally known to be so powerful in wars so you, Russia versus Ukraine it's pretty obvious who's, who's got the upper hand yeah but honestly I think Ukraine's really fighting back well they I mean yeah. from what I know from what I know I mean guys if you're watching this is going to be like 2 3 days after you know we're, the day we're shooting this so it's going to be probably much much more updated than what we know now mm-hmm. but like as what we know now Russia has been sending like 25% to 50% of their troops there and Ukraine Ukraine <laughs> Ukraine <laughs> Ukraine is actually doing well they've I've I've heard from TikTok again, so but the TikToks that I've watched are are of new sources. So th- these are somehow valid. Um they've shot down carrier planes that have paratroopers that are supposed to land on Ukraine to invade in the middle of the city, but Ukraine actually shot shot them down and like that averted a lot of you know, ground fights instead of, you know, the the aerial fights that they are they're having more and the border fights that they're having more and you've heard about that um that mm-hmm. island right where russia was like hey you guys you need to surrender and shit what did ukraine fucking say bro they're hard my man they're fucking hard bro they you remember are, and I'm... the one you said like me... i don't dude i don't remember i have terrible memory. Yeah, i think it was like snake island and like a, a, a Russian warship was like, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta surrender to us right now." And like, there are thirteen people oh. on the island, and like, ah, yeah. they fucking said, <laughs> "What should we say you to these said... guys?" <laughs> They're just like, "Surrender, please," or something like that. Yeah, and they're like, so brave. And, and they're, they're Ukraine so was like, "Go fuck yourself, Russia." <laughs> yeah, legit. Like, legit man, that's legit. And even before the whole war was, go- even the- before the war was starting, it was just, it was just, um, they just thought about it starting. You could see in Twitter, Ukraine was tweeting memes, dude. They were tweeting memes toward- <laughs> towards freaking Russia. <laughs> and like, dude, you're about to go to war. You have the risk of going to war. You're tweeting memes about them. Are you trying to, are you trying to start the war? <laughs> Ukraine is like, I don't know. I don't know, man. The it's, people it, in Ukraine are crazy. I mean, even though, yeah, we're making jokes, we're making light of it, though. But like, and I, the fact that we're doing this is just we're acknowledging the strength of Ukraine too. They're yeah actually very. What's the term? 
there's Brazilian. a term like this in the Philippines too. We're very, um, I forgot the term. It's, it's along the lines of being tenacious and like, um, whatever is thrown uh, at them, they're freaking surviving, bro. And like, yeah, that that is that is resilient. Kind of, resilient. That's what I said. Oh sh! I do it here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start a war with me, dude. <laughs> I, I won't. Don't worry. Because <laughs> I don't have the troops, man. <laughs> it's alright. I I know it's an honest honest mistake. Oh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, yeah. Filipinos are really no. They're always being told that they're that they're resilient. Yeah. So many stuff has been happening in our country and. We're surviving it, but you know what? To be honest, we're kind of barely surviving it. And people are like, people are romanticizing it. And they're saying, oh, they're so resilient. Like, help us. Yeah. Man, help us. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I get what you mean. People are, it, it's, it's the, it's one of the good things about the Filipinos. They like, they know how to have fun with their situation. But like, mm, of yeah. course, it just kind of, overshadows the real problem you know it's so yeah. easy to cover up your negative anything negative with just like a good positive energy but still yeah the problem is still there <laughs> to it's be honest still there. it's still existing it still needs help yeah. you know but like back to ukraine and russia i'm the one that you said about like how the president is really there i love the part when the u.s actually which we're going to talk about more too. The U.S. is going to... Mm. The U.S. invited the Ukrainian president to, you know, if you want to ride out of the country, we can really help you out with that. But what the Ukraine president said, hey, I don't want to ride out. I need ammunition. The war is here. Like, that That takes major balls, bruh. He grew a pair, bruh. Like, imagine... You're the president, and this is, by the way, a new president from what I know. He, imagine being the president of a country that is war-stricken. You know, it doesn't usually happen. Imagine if you're Trump or Biden or any of the U.S., you know. You don't want war, right? It's, it's, it's too far gone already to have war. It's been yeah. a long time since people are actually, you know, going to war. Going to war. And like, yeah. <laughs> you're the unlucky fellow that has to... Deal with <laughs> deal with the time <laughs> frame that you that you're in war. He's a new president, you said. Uh, fairly like, new, new, because from what I know, oh um, the Ukraine was a corrupt country before before that president. So he, I guess, he's trying mm -hmm. to be the president that kind of lifts up the country again and that makes it more. That's why he was appealing to be one of part of the NATO NATO. Mm -hmm. NATO cumulative country something because he wants to give Ukraine a chance to be a better country and Russia is opposing oh, that but oh. there's also a point where Russia is is actually validated to why they started the war well this is the opinion of others because NATO has been, has been trying to expand their territories right like what what mm -hmm. if they got Ukraine and like Russia's gonna be like, they're scared because like NATO was actually made to combat the Soviet Union, which Russia is a part of, or I think Russia's the yeah. spearhead of the Soviet yeah. Union. So it's actually what makes Putin really, you know, mad a little bit because like I know the Soviet Union has already been taken down, but like why are you trying to push forward to our territories more? You know, you you've already defeated us. So I guess that's why Putin is trying to fight back. But I think it's still so bad. We can always do this in a more mm. diplomatic way. I mean... That is true. Wasn't COVID-19 enough? Exactly. I mean, it's still it's still going on in the world. Yeah. So what? And then they're going to do the whole war. The new, the new thing now is war after disease? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening, bro? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's just... Wow, the timing. It's just kind of scary for, you know, the whole world. But, like, actually, I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you feel it, like, right now? I what's 
everything actually, is happening. At first, no, but then I keep seeing all these TikToks. Like almost my whole for you page is literally just about the war. Updates. They're not gonna lie. Yes, yeah. yes, almost all of it, and then it just kind of makes me feel like it really is happening. Like you know it's happening, but sometimes you don't feel it, right? Yeah. But me, like right now, I think. I think a day ago actually I started to actually feel it right now that we're talking about it mm-hmm. and I, I, I saw it on the news just last night yeah I could really really feel it that it's actually happening and and how the other countries are affected by it too um, e- economically speaking yes we are very affected by it it's gonna be difficult I I personally think that the biggest impact that Russia will, you know, give us is gas prices will go up. When exports yeah. stop from Russia, because I'm, I'm not really sure what they export to other countries, but with the U.S., they, I think they're a big exporter of fuels and oils. And also for Germany, they also export their, they, el- they also export their energy, like electricity and stuff like that to Germany. Yeah. That's why I think Germany is trying to be neutral in a way because they don't want that to stop. And the U.S. Yeah. has been giving sanctions already, which I think is pretty smart, if you ask me, to like cut off yeah. uh, transactions between Russia <laughs> and other countries. But still, Russia has the upper hand on fuel and oil, I guess, because from what I know, they're the third um, ranking distributor of that and in a global scale. So that's what they're trying to um, lean on in terms of the war. Like, hey, you can cut us off from everything, but still, we still trans, we still export oil and like fuel. What the hell are you gonna do about that? And I've also heard that mm, yeah. they're the major exporter of wheat <laughs> in the U.S. too. Oh. <laughs> and like, it's it's kind of crazy that imagine mm-hmm. the prices of what I don't know what wheat actually does, like bread, <laughs> bread, bread, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bread, cereal. flour. Yeah, I don't like think. This. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but not... yeah, if, if 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 you know, wheat prices go up. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of weird. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Not gonna lie, dude. I thought you said weed. <laughs> Two joints. <laughs> <All right. laughs> nah, man. Let's let's stick with wheat. Yeah, yeah, wheat. So yeah, they export a lot of thing, a lot of things, and like they're also banking on having China behind them as well so Mm -hmm. it's just kind of crazy that this is gonna affect us economically and i'm thinking about it as someone who's working already and like dude gas prices are actually really up right now and that's not because of russia that's not because of russia yet that's just how the philippines is it's at the price of gasoline right now i think it's 63 pesos per liter and when covid struck from what i can remember there was a point where it was just like 40 plus. Imagine. Yes, it was. That increase in prices just from what's happening to us economically right now in the Philippines. And what if war struck and a lot of countries get in between that shit? Mm-hmm. Joe Biden is right. Or Trump, I'm not sure who said it, but like this is going to be the end of the world if the US gets involved in that shit. And like, we're really going to fucking fight our asses off. Because from what I know, Japan, yeah. um, China, if the U.S. gets involved, we'll try to invade Taiwan too. And a lot of things, a lot of shit is going to happen. It's going to go off. And like, I think it's going to crash. It's going to crash. And I honestly just want peace, bro. Aren't we it's just, scary. aren't we done with all this shit? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not going to lie, it's really scary thinking about, I mean, how's, how's the future going to look like if this kind of stuff keeps happening? I never really imagined, like, you know how Genghis Khan was? I don't know if you know that, dude. He was, like, a great general or leader of Mongolia. And he fucking made every part, uh, some a lot of parts of Europe or Asia in into his own by conquering them. And, like, you know, like how the Spaniards, you know, conquered us too and colonized us. It's just so mm-hmm. weird to me. How, how does that happen? Like, like fucking okay you're now in that city you fucking killed a lot of people and now you're you over, mm-hmm. overthrew the government and now you're the now that state is like a state of your country right 
it's just so weird to mm -hmm. me that that could still happen, you know, <laughs> yeah. after being established, after everything being established as a so sovereign country, like the Philippines is, like we're, we're a sovereign country now, and like we're not under any other country. That's just so weird to me to think that, oh, someone could colonize us again. That's a possibility now. Yeah, we're, it is weird to think about it. Especially in our generation, we never really thought that war would happen, right? Like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even think the whole pandemic would happen. I mean, like, we're, we're, we're just fucking out here drinking iced coffees and, like, <laughs> traveling around Trying the world. Trying to take his pictures and, yeah. How and do then you all think... of a sudden... How do you think our generation is going to handle this shit? Like, I don't even know. <laughs> here, let me talk to you about this. Um, in Ukraine, they're having martial law right now. And uh, all males 18 to 60 years old are to stay in the country and fight for their country. They're going to be given guns and Me? ammunition. Like 60 years old? 18 to 60. Yeah. Even even so, I think forty to sixty years old, they're gonna be fine with it. But imagine the generation yeah. below that that's just like we're mm. living in a fairy tale. We were free and like what war? Yeah. <laughs> well like dude, imagine imagine I mean you, okay. Yeah. Okay. Imagine you going to war like right now. Like you're just doing this whole podcasting and doing your own thing. You're working, you're drinking iced coffee, going to the gym, and all of a sudden you need to go to war. How do you feel? I'd honestly say that I'm gonna be a bit of a pussy. Not gonna lie. Like <laughs> I mean your 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 life, you're risking your life and you, you do you're I'm pretty sure you don't have any training for this. A little bit, but like not not anything valuable to real life. But like you never, combat. like you never thought that you would you would actually need to apply it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's that's the whole pressure. Imagine like you're just you're eighteen or nineteen, thinking about oh, where which college am I gonna go to, or like freaking yeah, what am I gonna do? Yeah. Like five years later. Okay, then... here's a gun. You might die tomorrow, so <laughs> no. <laughs> I had a, I had life. I had it all planned out, but now you're gonna have to go to war. I know. This just kind of so makes sad. this kind of makes me feel bad for the the veterans, the people who really did go to war, and the people who yeah. died. It just makes more yeah. sense now how tragic that They're... is. Cause like, it, mm -mm. it's just kind of like a life wasted, right? Like it does feel like that. Imagine being a parent raising this kid till adulthood, and like. Bye. Just like exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> it kind of kind of makes you feel like you're disposable or makes you feel like your kid is disposable if you're the parent. Yeah. It's just so sad. And just it just makes me feel stupid and disgusted because I never really thought about this when we were being taught history. Like me oh, too. Cool cool they fought yeah. war thanks for thanks for the freedom which now we just kind of feel like oh my god this is so valuable right now what we're feeling yeah <laughs> it, it didn't feel as heavy as when we were first learning about wars and stuff yeah and then yeah like i'm pretty sure we knew about how soldiers get trauma and then years later they're still traumatized yeah we didn't really get that right? we did i mean we kind of get got it but we didn't have we didn't feel the weight of it you mm. know how heavy it actually was until now it's not even it's just starting palang and we're already feeling the weight of mm -hmm. it so you could kind of imagine how the trauma would be after the war yeah especially for the people who especially especially for the people in russia and ukraine not just ukraine because i know from what i know people in russia mm -hmm. are not supportive of the war the people not the government, the people. Like, mm. the people are rallying. The people are fighting mm. for peace. And the government run by Putin is the one that's actually maneuvering and freaking planning the war and stuff. The people are just, hey, what? We didn't ask for this. Why are you doing this? Aww. And, like, it's just kind of it's kind of sad. And, like, I've seen it videos is. of um, 
soldiers and civilians of Ukraine actually just talking like and Russian soldiers like hey we really we really didn't want this but like um, we just got to do this this is uh, this is what was told of us to do yeah and it's our duty as you know soldiers of our country and i've seen yeah. like i've seen videos of uh artil- artillery vehicles being abandoned by russian soldiers because they don't want to participate anymore like you know how how you, you know that they know how valuable the freedom was now it's it's a mm-hmm. past tense for them was and like yeah. it's not yeah. there anymore it's really happening oh my god i just can't feel the weight of it oh. anymore it just it just sucks looking at tiktok right now everything the for you page is like uh. yeah i mean that's what i've been noticing cuz i i i always feel like going to tiktok was my escape or something And yeah. I was trying to, I was trying to chill, just chill. And then I noticed almost everything I was seeing was about Ukraine and Russia. Mm-hmm. Literally, almost everything. I'm not even joking. And then that's when it really weighed weighed down on me yeah. on how real this whole thing was. And I just, I, I just watched them, you know, and they got to learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty cool, but sad. It's just so yeah. sad, and like. Uh, it, it, you have to be in watching TikTok too. You have to be kind of responsible for trying to filter out the fake news and the, you know, real mm. news because I think there yeah. are a lot of hoax videos too uh, up on there that are just yeah yeah like, uh, war simulators and like they're just making mm. up stories and like oh my god just to get that clout. I oh, mean, those are exactly. those people. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of a lot of those. Oh. Before we move on to the next topic, have you heard of the ghost of Kiev? The ghost of Kiev, that fighter yes. jet. Bro. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. How many did he? He has How six many? confirmed kills, bro. Like, I mean, not kills. <laughs> I mean, there in fi- six confirmed jets that he fucking blew yeah. out of the sky. He... Yeah. Oh, I just pray that the Russian it. pilot got out before the plane blew up. Me too. Like... <laughs> Me too. But like Don't get us wrong, we don't want anyone getting killed. But dude, you got to admit that's mad skills. Bro. I know, bro. Like mad how skills. I mean, you're out already you you're already outnumbered, bro. You're like Yeah. How many jets oh. does Russia have? A, a lot, I bet. And like six six bro yeah. from what i know that uh if you have like five planes down in your whole career in a year you're called an ace but like he just did that in 24 hours like yeah yo <laughs> mad respect man <laughs> yeah mad respect bro we Whoever don't want this are. but like dude you gotta admit you gotta admit that is that is pretty awesome Oh, man, wow. the testosterone <laughs> level must like be like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, okay. Oh, <laughs> even, Sorry, even, we were kind of just fangirling and fanboying over here. Even Ghost of even Kiev. me, like just looking at it, I even posted on my Instagram story, like mad respect for the Ghost of Kiev, man. Get, mm, he's the real yeah. life, because like I know people. I know a lot of people are playing like what COD right now or like mm-hmm. any war mm-hmm. game and stuff. This is real <laughs> fucking life, bro. <laughs> This is real and it's it, it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, no, and... not the war. I mean the <laughs> the ghost of Kiev. Ghost of Kiev. He's he's literally the guy who could really say, "Hey, it's, uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner, bro." <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, dude, yes. I shot down it. six fucking planes, man. <laughs> it is him. It is. Him. Him, bro. Yeah, he's gonna be known. He's gonna be written in the history books, bro. Like he's gonna be mm-hmm. taught to children in the future. Damn, it's an awesome lesson. If I'm But... gonna have kids, and then they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna ask me like, "Hey, is the ghost of Kiv real? Did he really kill six instead of?" I'm like, "Yes, he did. <laughs> he's. Still... <laughs> I fangirled over him, and you gotta believe me." It's true. You're a fucking, you're a freaking I'm... 40-year-old. They're like, yeah, fucking hell. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Getting hyped over. <laughs> yeah. I, 
I'm 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 gonna be calling you up like so so somebody asked me about the ghost of Kiev man, bro. <laughs> tell tell him man. <laughs> tell it to him. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm turning into a different race. Um, <laughs> I might even show my kid like a TikTok of Ghost of Kid. <laughs> I mean, I I just, I just hope we still have kids in the future, you know? <laughs> oh no! Yeah, you're right. Because <laughs> because I... not gonna lie, if like war if war really does break out and like the Philippines is involved, what the fuck no. do we have to offer, man? <laughs> like. I know, I know. Yeah, at this at this rate, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> I, I actually heard. I was talking to this with my dad. Um, he's fifty plus years old now, so he was partially he's partially well versed in, you know, how things are in the Philippines. He mm-hmm. told me <laughs> that <laughs> that mm-hmm. I think we only have like one fighter jet and like five tiny missiles <laughs> here. In the- <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, I'm no. not sure. No. Tell me you're joking. <laughs> we are lacking, bro. <laughs> and and, just... mm-hmm. and thankfully, um, I'm, I'm not sure if this is true, but like, uh, I don't really want to talk about this, but like, Duterte mm. has this international policy where he has become neutral in a way that we are friends with Russia, and we are also friends with the U.S. But I think, personally, he's leaning more into Russia, not gonna lie, because I've seen videos of him bad-mouthing a lot of U.S. presidents and stuff, so I'm just kind of mm. scared a little bit. <laughs> but mm. there are people thanking his policy that keeps us kind of safe in these dire times. <laughs> mm, being neutral. Yeah, a bit. Being yeah. friends, not really neutral, but like just having a good relationship, I guess, with both parties instead of like being one sided with the US or one sided with Russia. Not sure though. Yeah. <laughs> Still but, not sure. Yeah. Don't take my word for it, guys. But that's, that's what I heard. So let's okay. just do a bit of research afterwards after listening to our podcast. Maybe go on Google and like, did Tristan say something true? <laughs> Comment down below if I said something wrong and let's learn together. No hey. Yeah, let's learn because I am also not um updated about that. I wanna know too. I'm gonna read your your comment. Yeah. Please do comment, guys. It really helps us know what you want with our podcast. Anything we can improve on, anything we can you, you want us to talk about. Or if you wanna be a guest, you could hit us up too. I mean, we're looking for yes, guests. Yes, of course. <laughs> Everyone's yes, yes. opinion matters, bruh. Like <laughs> I like yeah, saying we're, we're gonna talk like, about bro. it. <laughs> but in any case the war we don't want it here i bet it was not an arbitrary decision by russia it was a direct it was a real direct Mm. decision Mm. made by putin and like he was he had he just got Mm. fed up of the whole system and wants to expand his colony but we don't want that let countries be sovereign man let us let us just work together not fight each other you know yeah if only we're already fucking getting beat up beat up by natural causes already we don't want to kill kill each other before that (laughs) yeah yeah no no one wants that (laughs) okay except for the presidents apparently (laughs) (laughs) so so i just want to i just want to (laughs) um i thought that this might be a good turning point for talking about the meat of our podcast right now this article i saw about solving relationship conflicts so russia and ukraine have a conflict right now and gave me an idea to talk about relationship conflicts to make it you know (laughs) to make it lighter (laughs) let's not talk about big countries let's talk about you and your partner if you have one (laughs) apparently we both talk about conflicts but like at a at a lower scale yeah (laughs) very very good are you looking at the same article as myself, or like, I I wanna um, I'm... Yeah. pull up the article. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So, let let me just read this short intro that they have, so that we would kind of get the gist of what they're talking about here. 
It's 10 Tips for Solving Relationship Conflicts by, of course, the very reliable source, Psychology Today. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've always been been reading stuff from this website ever since I was in elementary. Oh. Oh, it's very interesting. I don't know why I kept on reading this. Did did you at one point want to be a psychologist? Yes. Maybe maybe that's why. (laughs) <laughs> Maybe it's okay. just so interesting. I know. All right. Okay, All let right. me read the intro. So, as anyone who has been in a romantic romantic relationship knows, disagreements and fights are inevitable. When two people spend a lot of time together, with their lives intertwined, they are bound to disagree from time to time. These disagreements can be big or small, ranging from what to eat for dinner or failing to complete a chore to arguments about whether the couple should move for one partner's career or deciding on children's religious upbringing. Wow. The mere fact that you fight with your partner isn't a sign there is real trouble in your relationship. In fact, when handled properly, fighting can improve your relationship. If you never fight and never talk about your problems, you will never solve them. By dealing with conflicts constructively, You can gain a better understanding of your partner and arrive at the solution that works for the both of you. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, it it is also possible for conflicts to escalate and create ill will without resolving anything. Okay, so here are research-backed tips that can really help you out if you're having conflicts. Especially, you know, during quarantine when you Mm -hmm. can never really escape each other's grasp for some reason. You're bound to have fights, you know? Yeah. It's... It's not, it's not, you know, argue. (laughs) You can't really evade that. It got a lot harder for many relationships during the quarantine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yeah. So the number, the number one tip is be direct. So I don't want to really read through the whole thing. I just really want to talk to you about this. So, so I've, I've put the, um, link down below if you want to read the article, guys. If it if you want to read it on your own to you know just get an opinion on it. But like, here's our opinion on this stuff. We do, we're not really trained psychologists, as you know, but we still want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. We want to share our experiences too regarding conflicts in the relationship. So, what do you yeah. think about being direct instead I of like? That... Go ahead. I think that really the. Um, really helps a lot because you know in re- relationships I've noticed, <clears throat> especially like with younger people. Mm-hmm. Um, not saying all of those, all of you guys. Um, but mostly it's 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 mind games, you know. A lot of times. Yeah. And then they see that it what makes the relationship fun, which might be, it might be true at first, but after a while it really gets tiring and it it makes the relationship kind of weak. Not gonna lie, because it it builds trust issues and all of that yeah. all that stuff that really weighs you down in the end mm-hmm. it's not fun anymore you gotta be direct and you gotta be um both of you guys have to be direct it doesn't it shouldn't be just one of you guys being direct and the other one's wanting to play games like no it's not gonna work either way you gotta be both of you guys you gotta have that mutual understanding of being direct but at the same time you gotta be respectful the the respect has to stay you know the love has to stay but you just have to speak your mind. You gotta, you gotta find a way to be able to talk in that manner. Yeah. Um, from what I know from this specific point, I am the type of guy to really be transparent with my problems. Like, I am not the type that what you said, play games, like be, like do mind games. Like, hey, I'm fine. But you're not really fine at all, you know? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, don't do that. How, guys, I swear. how the fuck are you going to move with a relationship when you're wasting time? You know, here's what I know. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Not going to be specific about this, but past relationships of mine would always want me to understand the problem myself first before them telling me, which I really mm. hate. Cause like, Mm-mm. you know how me- it it's it's fine if you're still maybe in high school or like uh 
uh, degree of education mm-hmm. that isn't so busy, you know, mm-hmm. busy yet. But like, if you're if you're working, if you have a lot of things on your plate, and like when you have a relationship, I'd rather have my partner just tell me what's wrong immediately, and we'll talk about it and try to find a good compromise with it. Instead of dragging it on and making me feel bad while I'm doing more important things, that's actually my yeah. experience, really true to life. Like I really hate it, and like I think Sophie is a direct <clears throat> person too. She would really call out the problem first instead of like. Yes, I so, can't. I can't. I can't really help it because usually when I feel something wrong, something's off. I have a problem about something. I, I really have to say it. Yeah. I really have to say it. But of course, I try to be as you know, respectful. But sometimes, sometimes if I see that the person already knows what the problem is, they mm-hmm. do, they know what they did, and they're not telling me that. That really pisses me off because, like, why are you not telling me? Like, are you trying to hide it from me? Because you can't really hide stuff from me. You're gonna lie. Yeah. And then, so, um, it, th- there's my point also that you both have to be direct, because, um, because if y- one of you is direct and the other one is not most most probably the other one will not like will not be able to take it you know um like let's say for example you were being direct the whole relationship the other mm-hmm. person is not so the other person's like what what you're doing um uh, what you said that he or she is saying that she's fine when she's actually not that she's actually feeling something yeah. Um, something bad, and she's not saying it. She's mm-hmm. not explaining what she's feeling, and so in the end, she's gonna burst out, mm. and then she might even do something that would sabotage her relationship. Yeah. All because she had all these feelings bubbled up, in which she could have just, you know, <sighs> said it. She yeah. could have just. You don't need. Okay, guys, you don't need to fight when you talk about feelings. Even just saying it, just saying like I feel sad or I feel bad about what you did. A while ago, just just as simple as that. You guys can start from there. Yeah, it's never yeah. wrong to express yourself. Like, why yeah. why do you, this is the person your partner? This is the person who you should trust the most to understand you, rather than yeah. the person that like you're hiding your feelings from. Why are you ashamed that you have these feelings? No, tell that person so he he or she would know what's the what the problem is and work together. It's that easy. Like, you're not you're not supposed to be, you're not supposed to be at war with each other to you know, <laughs> to parlay yes. parlay it from what we hey, talked about a while ago. Hey. But like, yeah, <laughs> but but seriously though, like, you're you're not supposed to be at war with each other. Why are you why are you trying to play games? Like, that's, to make a to build a better relationship, you gotta fight for it. <laughs> you really yeah, gotta you fight gotta be... for it. Gotta be on the same side. You yeah. really gotta make some conscious choices and yeah. decisions. Okay, I think we made that point really. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it 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 really struck me, you know, because <laughs> it was a me it was a big too. it was a big problem me. with my previous ones. No, really. No, okay, hold on, because like I got really pissed off with this, um, topic. No, I mean yes, I got pissed off with this topic because I I remember my past relationships too. Yeah. In which, in which, like, at first I thought everything was really going well, and then in the end they would just burst out, and then they would blame me because they bottled up their feelings, uh, and I'm like, how is that my fault? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how's that my fault? I don't know. I don't know. Just, just talk. It's just a big. It's- it's just a big deal that they really blamed you, you know? Like, it's it's your own fault for not actually saying it. Here, yeah, here. And bottom like, bottom and... line is, guys, mm-hmm. people are not mind readers. Like, I know we could detect right here at, the, at our base. We could detect if there is something wrong. Like, oh, there might be something wrong. She's, he or she is being cold or a bit spares in a way she's not texting me back or something like that there you can really it it's a sign that there is something wrong but like ask the person on the other end do you think that guy really knows what's going on <clears throat> if you're not going to tell him like is he does he have to to revit <laughs> here's the thing 
because <laughs> men men are simple beings right i'm not i'm not speaking for every ma- male in the whole world but like from what from what i am like i don't like com- to complicate things and i easily forget about past experiences like <laughs> i can't even remember what i had for breakfast y- breakfast yesterday for <laughs> to be honest like yeah but mm-hmm. yeah men are simple give them the problem they'll try to make a solution for sure don't yeah don't wait for them to try to realize what they did because they can't remember i'm not lying <laughs> like we cannot remember what we did yeah. especially if it's not really significant to us like especially like here um let's just say this girl has a problem with like the guy getting a piece of toast from the toaster and like not telling her you know that's a big problem for her. like oh, i don't really like that the guy just took the toast but like if you're if you're the guy that doesn't really care about like getting the toast from the toaster you won't be able to like no i will not remember that shit if you're mad about it the next two days you know yeah like, yeah stuff like that but, yeah, but you... guys oh yes continue but if you told me like hey i didn't really like you getting the toast from the toaster that specific day then I yeah. will not do that moving forward. You know? <laughs> it's simple. It's direct. It's going to help us both out. <laughs> um, true, true. But guys, because, um, everyone's different. So if your partner is not really exactly the direct kind of person, y'all can have, y'all can have um, a little middle ground that y'all can talk it out still. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be like this exactly. It's uh, written on stone that you'll have to be direct for a re- mm-hmm. relationship to work because not everyone's like that, and that's understandable. So you guys will have to work it out. Um, meet in the middle or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess maybe discuss it beforehand that when you realize that your partner, because for me, I would honestly just say if I have a next relationship, hey, I'm the type to be direct and transparent, and like I would like to solve my problems with you in a quick and efficient manner rather than me being so mad at you for five days that I don't want to talk to you and stuff like that. But like, yeah. if you notice that your partner isn't direct, you might as well set up, set something up. Like, um, you don't wait for her to tell you, but like you tell her that, hey, I know that you, you're feeling bad or you're feeling something and I might have made a mistake, but I on you could really just say, "Hey, I'm I honestly don't remember, and you really got to help me out." And I'm sorry that I need to ask you that what mistake I did because that's you could really just be honest because if how 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 the fuck are you gonna know if, how the fuck are you just gonna figure that out out of thin air, you know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Some, understandable. Yeah, d- just just tell your partner that you're not really sure what you did, and like don't don't be mad. Just be respectful. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I I know that I hurt your feelings somehow, but like, and I'm not really sure what I did, and I'm really honest to God, not sure what I did. So, can you please help me out? <laughs> or like, and I'm begging yeah. you that to not be, you know, irritated by me asking, but be more, be helpful instead. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> Just cut me <laughs> some slack a little bit so we can work this out and continue a good relationship together. Unless it's pretty yeah. obvious, you know? Like cheating. Oh, yeah. Or like, yeah. That's pretty obvious. You don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. Mm-hmm. You're just going to be so, so dumb yeah. if you cheated on that person and you don't really know what your problem is. What, what the hell? That is that is freaking gaslighting. That you can't do that. Yep. Don't do those. Okay, so you got to be direct. But like, you got to be pleased. Be honest with your partner, yeah. even with the small things, because <laughs> I swear that goes the long way. It goes, it goes a long way, yeah. It goes, yeah, it goes the, a long way. Sorry, it goes a long way. <laughs> you gotta be honest. With me, okay. Even the small things. So before we continue, I'm just gonna we got we got a partner right now in our show, um, and I really wanna, I really wanna promote them because. It's going to help you out, you guys out too. So here. Today is a great day to start your own podcast. Whether you're looking for a new marketing channel, have a message you want to share with the world, or just think it would be fun to have your own talk show. Podcasting is an easy, inexpensive, and fun way to expand your reach online. That's very true. 
Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. Your show can be online and listed in all the major podcast directories like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more within minutes of finishing your recording. And along with over 100,000 podcasters, our team here at The Hal Diaries Podcast also uses this platform. Following, following the link in the show notes, we'll let Buzzsprout know we sent you and it gets you a $20 Amazon gift card if you sign up for a paid plan. And it really helps support our show. So guys, if you want to start a podcast too and, you know... <laughs> want to get an amazon gift card just head on over to the link below in the show notes or wherever you're watching this because i will really put that link in <laughs> you just got to click it sign up make a podcast upload it and you're going to be on spotify too like us <laughs> big flex <laughs> nice all yeah. right so you y'all heard that good go to bus sprout and sign up and for a paid plan, mm-hmm. please, so you can get that Amazon gift card. Okay. Yeah. Number two, talk about how you feel without blaming your partner. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is a big one. Yeah. It, it kind of goes back to the point where when you're discussing, you, you just don't have to be aggressive. Like, just say how you feel. And here, there's an example here I read a while ago. And mm-hmm. it says... For example, this man might say, I get irritated when you claim I'm flirting with someone during an innocent conversation. It's not necessarily putting the blame on the person for, you know, claiming that he's flirting, Mm -hmm. but he's saying that I'm irritated. I'm irritated that you're you're claiming that (laughs) I was flirting with another person rather than he's saying that, hey, you're you're being stupid because you're like claiming that that I am flirting with another person. It kind of takes yeah, the load off, like you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to no, add on I'm something. Just, <laughs> no, I was just commenting on what your example was. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we, we, okay. we, 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 weren't, we weren't in the same wavelength that moment, guys. <laughs> Dude, we were like deer in headlights. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's weird. Maybe it's weird with me and Sophie because mostly we get we have the same opinions on a lot of things. So it's most likely when she says something, I'm just gonna agree to it, and like when I say something, she's gonna do the same thing. So like... we have a lot of we have a lot of um similar opinions. Yeah, and it's really cool. Not gonna lie, because it avoids conflict. <laughs> oh yes, I was gonna say that exact word. See? Oh, wow. <laughs> See what I mean, guys? Yeah. <laughs> you know how many you know how many jinxes we get at like just a, just one day. <laughs> Dude, y'all aren't gonna believe it. Yeah, you're not ready yeah. for that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> it it just the talk about how you feel without blaming your partner kind of goes back to being direct too. Just don't be aggressive and. Stay calm when you talk to your partner and tell them how you feel instead of blaming them outright. Because they're, mm-hmm. you know, the, those conversations where, hey, you can't change me because this is who I am, right? The, that's mostly mm-hmm. the conversation, right? But like, it's, it's kind of difficult because when you're in a relationship, it's not really trying to change you, but trying to make you grow, right? Instead of changing yeah, you. Yeah, making each other grow. Yeah, so each other. So if you keep blaming a person, let's say in in the in the sense of jealousy, let's say, um, hey, I'm jealous. I'm really jealous of that guy, and the girl would say, "Why are you jealous? I mean, we're being innocent and stuff." And like, if if the girl would would really say like, "You're being stupid. Why are you jealous?" It's like it's kind of saying, and That's... the guy's defense would be up right then and there. Yes. Hey, this is me. <laughs> I can't really change who I am, so <laughs> you you can relate, right? So like that's the initial yeah. initial reaction, yeah. right? When 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 you're being hit with aggression all of a sudden, like instead of like um the girl could have yeah. have said like um hey I'm sorry that you're feeling that way and I I really get it like 
you're you're a guy and you you know what how guys think but i i'm mm-hmm. honest to god I'm, i swear i'm just talking to this guy without any feelings and we're being platonic and stuff mm-hmm. wow the guy <laughs> if i were told that i'm just gonna be like oh okay i mean i still feel <laughs> jealous but like at least you're, you didn't blame little... me for being jealous you know i mean you didn't yeah. you didn't hurt my feelings all of a sudden that like, it's called invalidating yeah. right so you yeah, invalidate yeah. my feelings invalidating. right away <laughs> mm-hmm. that's that, true that's just gonna raise conflict yeah yeah that's that's where the whole trust issues could start mm-hmm. if you're invalidating the feelings and um those are like little, the little moments where I've, I've had this i've heard of this saying where there are moments in life where you get to have a choice to either connect or sort of like sabotage the bond so like every time you get to have the choice i hope you choose to connect so you your 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 first example with the girl said that the guy was being stupid mm-hmm. that sabotages the bond but then the second one when she was validating the feelings and trying to explain her part where she's honestly just doing she's honestly just being innocently talking with the guy that's that's creating a bond so that's creating more trust in each other yeah. basically you're you're not invalidating the feelings you're not blaming the person for having those feelings but you're acknowledging that they feel that way and you're being honest with yourself too like that that creates a good um that's real good communication on let's say the second example the girl's part like okay just yeah. she put it calmly and like she didn't invalidate the feelings and that's really good the guy would yeah. settle down not gonna lie if if i were given mm-hmm. that if i were given those words i'm just gonna be like yeah there's nothing to to argue about then like wh- there's wh- nothing, nothing nothing's gonna come after yeah because like well she she didn't get mad at me for getting jealous and um she told me that nothing's happening okay what where should i be where 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 should i get mad about now you know like with, at which part of that, that this conversation should i get conversation should i get mad so you just it's you know a... you just close that off all of a sudden like oh okay but i'm still jealous you could just say mm-hmm. i'm still jealous but thank you for you know assuring me mm-hmm. that nothing's really happening and like yeah but that depends on the girl too like if the actions are really <laughs> You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You there's a lot of factors that you gotta factor in, but basically, you guys saying that's kind of that is that is where you guys are gonna start um, fixing the problem. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That's how you fix the problem. I, li- I like what you said about connecting instead of yeah. sabotaging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a lot of stuff. There's like a lot of moments like that in conversations between um, couples and. Yeah, they don't. They don't really see it that way. I think. <laughs> That's I know. True. I I wish there was like a sort of pause moment where <laughs> instead of like you could <laughs> no hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. What if okay. like let's say those <laughs> conversations do come up and like let's say God or any higher deity would just like okay give him a pause moment like let him think <laughs> let him oh. think um yeah. and you have choices up there <laughs> like a. <laughs> You could be mad. <laughs> B, you could connect. <laughs> like that would be really helpful. Not gonna lie. I'm mean, like, to be honest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be happy that the, that would pop up all of a sudden, and time would just freeze, okay. and like your girl's just like, <laughs> and, like um. <laughs> hey, yes. Okay, so now that we know about this, you could just like imagine that. Yes. Visualize. <laughs> Well, while the argument is happening or after the argument, you can just imagine that and <clears throat> just remember what you learned from this podcast. All of y'all who are listening right now, y'all can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if it works, comment down below. Oh, God, come on, guys, comment, comment. We want your please. opinions, please. <clears throat> we want your feedback, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but like, wait. I'm just imagining, sorry, I'm just imagining, like, if we do visualize that, imagine the girl just sees us being spaced out all the sudden, like. <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> like, five, like five, it's been five minutes, and, like, the girl's like, hey, are you okay? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sorry, can we just, can we just get out of here? 
<laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Man, that's kind of creepy. I know, but like, and... it it would be a funny real life situation to encounter. <laughs> I, I would want that to happen. <laughs> and and if if a person does that to me, and like she he or she just faces out in front of me, I'm like, oh, he must be having that moment. <laughs> Ooh. Let me yes. let me just grab drinks for a little bit. I'll just come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna think of that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, as long as they're not, they didn't suddenly fall on the ground or oh, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a different story. Does that at the most inopportune moment? <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Number three is never say never. Um, it has a colon. Oh wait, per parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. She open parentheses. Yeah. Or, uh, always. Okay, uh-huh. I'm. I'm just gonna read this. It's a bit short. All right. Uh, when you're addressing a problem, you should you should avoid making generalizations about your partner. Statements like, "You never help out around the house," or "You're always staring at your cell phone," are likely to make your partner defen- defensive, rather than prompting a discussion about how your partner could be more helpful or attentive. Attentive. This strategy is likely to lead your partner to start generating counterexamples of all the times they were, in fact, helpful or attentive. Attentive. Wait, how do I say that? <laughs> <laughs> again, again, you don't want to put your partner on the defensive. Okay. Yeah. That's, right. That does make sense. Like. Yeah. Um. I. For, it's actually fairly obvious what they're saying here. Like, if you say never... If you say never, let's say, hey, Soph, you never call me back or something like that. If I would say that, Sophie would think of I'm all gonna, the times that she did call me I'm back. I'm going to get all defensive. <laughs> here here are the receipts. And you can't really receipts. blame the other person. <laughs> 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 that, yo, that is me. You know? You know that's, that is how I am. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Th- I never text you back. Because what what the fuck is this? <laughs> I have all the receipts. You can't get past me. Okay, so we're kind of straying away from the point. The point is, the other person is going to get defensive. And you can't really blame the other person. Because you all know how it sounds like when 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 we read the statements here. Yeah, you, you're you always staring at yourself when you never help out around your house. Yeah. Of course, you're going to try and defend yourself. Of yeah. course, you're 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 going to remember the times when you did because the other person doesn't remember it. Or maybe the other person does remember it, but mm-hmm. the, the way they're saying it, it's just really, it, it's it's asking for trouble. Yeah, it, it, it gets your blood boiling all of a sudden instead of like, it, it, it also kind of happens it. with your parents too, right? If we're talking oh, about yeah, conflict. I feel like that's where it starts. Yeah. With your parents. Yeah, like, <laughs> let's mm. say your mom would be like, Hey, you never help out around the house, and like <laughs> thinking about doing the dishes like a day ago or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I do help out around the house. What do you? What are you I saying? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah, just it's a good it's a good tip. Just never say never or always, because it kind of mm. gets you to sabotage again your relationship. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. Don't say the word. It's that simple. Yeah. Um, if you, if you all want to say something to your partner that might need the word never or always, I I think there will always be a counter word, or you can use, use another one, another kind yeah. of sentence. Yeah. Mhm. It all boils down to uh, just being calm when you talk to your partner before here. Yeah. Before you raise something, <clears throat> you raise something with your partner in terms of communication, like before you you're eager to start a fight maybe just calm down a little bit like do something else for a while Mm -hmm. then go to them and like hey i'm I'm feeling kind of sad about what you did a while ago it's better than hey what the fuck are you doing (laughs) (laughs) exactly okay um um i used to have this thing with my previous partner Mm -hmm. where we have we have this safe word and if if we're having an argument, it gets all heated. Yeah. We're gonna say the safe word. I think it was. I'm not sure it was. I think it was. Wait, I can't. I actually can't bananas, remember. Right. Example. <laughs> no, it wasn't banana. <laughs> it wasn't banana. It was bananas. Bananas is my safe word. <laughs> I think it was like beef steak or something. Oh, <laughs> I don't even. 
yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. food, food. It, yeah, yeah, you're right. Something like that, something like that. We're we're having heated argument, and all of a sudden, one of us will just say beef steak. You're like, all right, let's just come back in yeah. a while, and we'll talk it out, and that's how we would do it. Um, and you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, to be honest, while we were talking about all these points, I'm actually learning a lot because um some of these uh hit me some sometimes like I'm on the vic I'm like the one being hit yeah and sometimes I'm the like I remember someone from my past yeah who did it so I'm I could say that I've been on both sides but I'm I'm learning yeah I'm yeah learning. that's that's really good that's actually my point in like bringing up these articles per se in our podcast because like it's not just them learning it's us learning too and it's yeah. also us trying to express our experiences as well like within because i know these articles these articles we're discussing are very relatable right like yeah it is. it's pretty relatable so it's supposed to be tailor made for us to speak out whatever we have experienced and like learn from mm. it and i'm i'm for sure i'm for sure going to say that if ever we me and sophie would have a new relationship or something like that having done this podcast <laughs> watch out we're gonna be we're gonna be pro- we're probably gonna be better communicators and we're gonna be yes. probably better people in general in as a partner in a relationship yeah yes <laughs> true i mean that's the goal right that is the goal <laughs> to be better yeah to be better okay yeah let's go move on to number four it's pick your battles if you want to have a constructive discussion, you need to stick to one issue at a time. Okay, I'm just going to read that. It's fairly obvious. Like, let's not, um, let's not have another argument within our arguments. You know? Let's say we're yeah. fighting about beefsteak. <laughs> let's say we're fighting about beefsteak. And you hit me with a, ha, yeah. You remember what you did like two years ago when you were... Okay, that's another argument. Like it's another one, yeah. It's another one. It's here when you read the article, I think the term is um kitchen sinking. Uh here it says this refers to an old expression, everything but the kitchen sink, which impl- implies that every possible thing has been included. When you want to solve mm-hmm. personal problems, this is probably not the strategy you take with yourself. Imagine you want to think about how to incorporate more physical exercise into your daily routine. You would probably not decide that this would also be the great time to think about how to save more money for retirement. So it's very different, like very different things put into one argument. And like, what? what are we, then you realize, hey, what are we fighting about exactly? Then, mm-hmm, yeah, you'll get tangled up in your topics because you just brought one thing up and another. Now you're, you're lost. Yeah, it should be just one thing at a time. Solve one thing at a time instead of like trying to... Here, it, it's the title itself. Pick your battles. <laughs> just one. Then maybe let's move on to another one next time. Right? Yeah, yeah. Y'all are just yeah. stressing yourself out. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you keep going. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I've noticed like all these points are about how to... Well, that's the whole point. Like how to communicate with your partner. Um, how to avoid conflict is what mm-hmm. it's kind of so you, you have to improve your communication right yeah, and these yeah. are like little little advices but if you, if you all like can't communicate very well right now and you're reading this or you're listening to this mm-hmm. uh, don't try, try don't try to force it you know into your partner you can you can implement it but maybe do it gradually or something but commit to it do it gradually but like commit to it yeah. and eventually you guys are gonna gonna do it naturally. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. and it also shows how when Sophie says committed, for me, it also shows how much you're willing to try and fight for the love that you have, right? It's kinda because mm-hmm. if you if you're being inconsistent with what you're trying to do to solve your problems, it's you gotta realize that maybe you're not really into this person as much as you think you are you know like yes because because if you if you do take our advice or take the advice of the article the article of course because we're just saying our opinions and 
again, guys, these are all personal experiences and not really um, researched advice from us. It's more of the article mm-hmm. doing all the research and just talking about it. But like, yeah, for me, if you're not willing to do all these things, I mean, even just gradually, as Sophie said, maybe you're not really in love as much as you're as much as you think you are maybe try and yeah. assess and like think about if because if you're not and you're you you're should. keeping at it and just fighting and stressing yourselves out it's just gonna waste your time <laughs> yeah um very important if you do come to the point you really have to assess yourself and be honest be real honest mm-hmm. with yourself do you actually love this person if you do like is it like how much like is it gonna go is it gonna last the long run yeah. or you think it's only gonna last the, the next two years or so here. you gotta be really honest about that mm-hmm. and here my my point is love really isn't enough not gonna lie to and it's i know it's, love is there love is nice it's very mm-hmm. it's very it's very cozy inside it makes you feel good but then when it could all... influence everything that you do. Yeah. But like when all when all these problems arise, you think love is still what you need? It's it's never no. gonna be well. it's never gonna be, hey, we're having this fight. Yeah. Jealous go, I feel I feel bad, you you're hurting me. But palangatagyap when I still love you. Um mm. If, if this guy, if this partner you're talking to with your partner, you know, if nothing's changing, nothing's improving with your relationship, and both of you are not fighting for it, or just one side is fighting for it, it shows. Yeah. <laughs> it shows. Right. Love um, isn't <laughs> love isn't enough. You, you can never always have the butterflies enough. there. Exactly. Just, love isn't gonna fight for your relationship. It's so different. You you have to fight with for your relationship if you want it to work. Love is always there, but like yeah. it's you who's doing all the fighting. It's you and your partner who's doing all the fighting to keep that love alive, rather than mm-hmm. you know just letting all the problems be and just making love your com- your you know the 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 thing you say when you don't know what to do anymore. Like <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, I think that there are couples who genuinely do love each other yeah. but they become toxic because everything else they do wrong yeah. or something like the, they do the communication part wrong yeah. they do the whole understanding part th- wrong they do the whole jealousy part wrong <clears throat> I think love love is not enough but like love is like one one of the cores in a relationship it's the core um, because like I said love really can influence the way that you do stuff the way that you feel the way that you think Mm-hmm. The way that you act, okay, pretty much everything, all right. Um, love is a car in a relationship, but it needs to have all those other stuff that's going on around the core. Yeah. So, it, <laughs> like layers of the earth, there's gonna be the mantle and everything, all that, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. It, it shouldn't just be the earth's core. There's gonna be all the other layers of it. So you will need all those layers. You don't need just love. Love is not enough. You gotta have all of those too. Mm-hmm. You're and really all those have to be healthy. Yes, they they all need to be like healthy and functioning. I want to keep continuing, but then we don't have much time left. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we had we had a really good talk. Yeah, it's it's more than an hour, but like here here's the last point right. for number five, and we're probably right. again gonna try to do a part two because the this yeah. article is really baller and really hits hard for us that's why we you yeah. know how good it is when you have a lot of points like you know yeah. how good yeah. how good an article is or how relatable a topic is when you really can't just stop talking about <laughs> the points that they're saying you keep uh, making points yeah yeah so right. if you want to see clips of these points maybe just head on over to our tiktok and <laughs> yeah see y'all can just listen to those points again yeah but here, the last tip we're going to discuss about today or talk about today is re- number five, really listen to your partner. It can be very frustrating to feel like your partner is not paying attention to you 
when you interrupt your partner or assume that you know what they're thinking, you're not giving them a chance to express themselves, even if you are confident that you know where your partner is coming from or know what they're going to say. You could still be wrong and your partner will still feel like you're not listening. I've had this so many times. Like, oh, <laughs> it's, uh, it sounds frustrating. I've had it too, but I have a feeling you had it more. Yeah, like, I mean, maybe both ways for every relationship, but like, I can relate. Like, I can relate to the part that you feel like your partner is not listening. You know, mm. like you're saying something, especially me, because I'm very transparent. Like I say what I feel and I can assure you guys, especially with my friends and like um, even Sophie and everyone else. I do not like being plastic and I would really tell you how it is. And especially with the complimenting part, like how beautiful Sophie is right now, I would really just say that outright and not that's there's no bias with it. Like. It's just me. If if it if the mm-hmm. if the thought comes into my mind, it's gonna go out. <laughs> there's no there's no restraint. That's why I'm kind of scared too. Yeah. If I'm being tactless, and I told Sophie about this a while ago when we were together, I'm like, I'm I'm not I'm really tactless, and I just really talk and speak speak whatever is going on in here, and it's mm-hmm. helpful, and it's sometimes, sometimes it sometimes kills me too. But like, yeah, yeah. I really hate it when when people assume that i'm not telling the truth and like they have their own opinion on what on what i'm thinking instead of what i'm really saying and it hurts me because you know what i just said a while ago i'm i really say Mm -hmm. it how it is and like here when they say that even if you're confident if you know where your partner is coming from or know what they're going to say you could still be wrong you could never determine Mm -hmm. what the person really is feeling just because you know them even if you're lifelong friends or you know, 25 years exactly. of being married. People change. <clears throat> People change. It's exactly. it's the only thing that's constant in this world. Change. So, yeah. hear people out. <laughs> yeah, them, I've, I've, had a, Go. I've had a really, yeah, I've had like a lot of bad experiences with this. And there's this one time, this one um relationship, wherein yeah. my partner, he said that he like he said that I didn't tell you because I knew what I knew what your reaction would be, and I'm like, I am literally prepared. I literally prepared myself in case in case that that situation would happen, and yeah. I was just waiting for him to tell me. Yeah. But then he didn't tell me, so I was like, okay, good. So I guess it didn't happen. I guess the situation didn't go to that. But it turns out it actually did. It, he just didn't tell me. But still, even even if I knew that, like I was gonna confront him about it, yeah. I was gonna confront him about it. I was already I was ready, readying myself to have just a conversation. Yeah. I wasn't gonna like do anything negative because that's yeah. what I used to do before. We we used to have like arguments and then I would just burst out. Then that that time, I was ready. My I was readying myself, and so it's I took time like a couple of days or a week before I confronted him about it yeah. because. At that time, I was pretty busy, so I wanted him to be able to, like, be able to really talk about it, like, be able mm-hmm. to settle down and, you know, like, um, I waited, yes, I communicate. I really, I waited for a good time for us to be able to talk. Then mm-hmm. he got, like, he got mad, and then he said it was because, like, he didn't tell me because there, uh, he, he, he knew what my reaction would be. Yeah. But little, little did he know, I already readied myself so he was wrong at that time and it would have been it was too bad because if if he had just been honest about it in the first place and if he had if like i gave him a chance to be honest and he like still got mad if he didn't do that if he didn't assume how my reaction would be we probably would have still been like right now but didn't happen so (laughs) It, <laughs> it was one of those moments with the connect and sabotage thing too like it was yeah, yeah you could have you could have <laughs> saved yeah. something but you know there was no exactly. pause <laughs> yeah because before that we had this talk about changing um especially me because mm. like i have anger issues Same. and stuff like that <laughs> i know dude <laughs> yeah, no, no, go ahead come on <laughs> i'm sorry and then, <laughs> 
I was I was really like are changing. Okay, I said this way too much, but I'm really going to emphasize it. I read it myself. I knew what my reaction was going to be. I was just I was I was ready to show it to you. I was ready to show you <laughs> <laughs> the new me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You didn't give it a chance. Yeah. You just left it like that. Yeah. And yeah, well, I accepted it already, but it's still gonna suck. That's pretty disappointing on both of your parts, cause like it is. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> but but I agree. That's a very good example of like <laughs> he he's already assuming the reaction instead of really zoning in on maybe she's gonna say something different this time or like you know mm. good example so <laughs> good real life example. If you guys are, if you guys do feel that way too, that you feel like your partner isn't listening to you, and you're still at the middle point of your relationship, tell them that you feel that you're, you know, not being <laughs> heard. Yeah. I guess it it might yeah, help please. you guys. It, don't yes. don't bottle up that feeling that oh my god he's not he's, he or she's not listening to me. Uh, who cares? I'm just gonna do whatever I want. Like. That could happen. Mm. It it happened to me at one point. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the who cares part that that would that would be a good signal to feel like care. you're 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 not in love anymore. And I'm sorry, oh, yeah. but like once you say that you don't care, or who the fuck cares, or whatever happens happens, you're just riding the ride now. You're not experiencing it. Like oh yeah, you feel me? So that's true. Like, you're okay yeah. you, you're having this argument again about let's say uh, the best example would be being jealous again but like yeah you're being jealous and like you you still see the same action being done even if you've already told your partner communicated the thing that she's he or she is like doing wrong in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable like mm-hmm. i mean even if it's safe or it's platonic or it's innocent what what happens if you feel that your partner is still uncomfortable, right? You're gonna try and yeah. not do that stuff, except if it's really <laughs> out of this world. Like, uh, you can't talk to your boss because I'm getting jealous. No, <laughs> no, that's stupid. <laughs> but like, yeah, but like yeah. there are th- there are things that you could really avoid to make your partner feel happy or comfortable. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, if you <laughs> If you if you keep doing the stuff that makes your partner feel uncomfortable, that partner would eventually be like, ah, "Who the fuck cares? Who cares? Uh, let let Mm-mm. let do whatever you want, okay? I don't really care anymore, okay? And then that that's a good sign that you're that's a good sign. <laughs> exactly. Once you don't, once you feel like you don't really care that much about what they're doing, um, yeah, like you said, that's a good sign. Yeah. Because love is about again fighting for the relationship, not <laughs> not yeah. putting each other away. <laughs> you know. Okay, yeah. that that <laughs> got a bit. <laughs> that, <laughs> I can really relate, guys. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, y'all y'all get it. We don't need to get coming um, from two really people who are it. single right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Relieving the fast. fast. Okay, I hope mm-hmm. I hope this this article kind of helped you out, guys, and um, I hope you keep you keep listening to our podcast to kind of know more about this. We're gonna we're definitely gonna do a part two, and I hope you have a guest with that too, so you you would also hear their opinion about this and another part two of the other article we discussed about last time. But yeah, this could really help you out if you do listen, and we don't have much time anymore, so I'm gonna end the podcast maybe. Okay. Let's have a game another time, probably. I think this this is too long. We for... really talked a lot. Yeah, yeah. we have a uh, yeah our time. <laughs> we we're <laughs> trying to limit the time, guys, because you know how the attention span of human beings are. But right now, yes. Yeah, but next time we're gonna try and really hit on all the points and not really expound on a lot of things that are unnecessary. We're we're pretty new with this stuff, so. We're not really sure about what we're saying, but yeah, hope this helps you out. And I'm going to say the outro now. Thank you so much, guys, for watching and listening again. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, like the page, 
If you can see the link in the description, please go ahead and click it. There are tons of discounts and surprises there that you might like, especially the Budsprout one. If you want to start your own podcast and talk about a lot of things. Um, we are the Hal Diaries Podcast on Spotify too. Look for Hal PH on Facebook and on YouTube. To get more intimate with us, you can follow us on Instagram. That's H-O-W-L-P-H, Hal PH, and S-F-Q-Z-N-12. That's for Sophie's Instagram. Send us a DM if you have a topic or suggestion that we might talk about on the next one. Thank you and have an awesome day, guys. Peace. Bye. <laughs>